Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is the control phase of the DeMaic process. Now hopefully by the time you've reached this video you've watched the other four, uh, define, measure, analyze, and you've just watched maybe the improve uh, video. One of the things I've done is I've, I've actually left up some of the material from the improve video because it links very nicely to what I'm about to say in the control phase of your project. So let's go over here and put the control phase in place. Now some people think that these tools here are actually the control phase when in fact these are the improved, these are the ideas that make the process work better. So what we've effectively done, we've had a process with too much variability, it's been wild and chaotic, bouncing around everywhere. We've identified the fact that it's wild and chaotic, we've looked at the variables, we've taken those variables we've taken the variability away from them and in order to do that we've used these controls in order to do that we've got the process now behaving as we would want it to let's put some tolerances let's put some tolerances on this thing okay we've got the process now behaving as we would want it to the key point about the control phase is that we keep it there and what we don't allow to happen is for the process to effectively go back to where it came from that's what the control phase is about it's about maintaining the game this can only really be seen over a longer period so control control is the most difficult thing to achieve and the best companies in the world are brilliant at control and essentially, what does control really consist of? It is a policing process. So in other words, you've written some rules in the standard operating procedure, a new operator comes along and for whatever reason, he hasn't read the standard operating procedure and he's not using the rules. What technique are you going to use to police this and to find out that you have a problem here and then correct my problem? Maybe you do some training or point out the fact that they need to read the standard operating procedure or whatever it happens to be. This is a policing process. Now these are the boring things that currently you don't like. For instance, ISO audits are part of your control phase. ISO audits are fantastic things if you get them to focus on the controls that make money every day. If you do that, the ISO audit is brilliant at that. What else could it be? 5S audits. Please take a look at your 5S audits and if it's all about sweeping up and how tidy the place is, please tear that audit up and write on them the audits. Audit the things that make money. Audit the things that are important to the process. 5S is a way to control the process. It is not a tidying up tool. Get away from that. They could be 5S audits. What else could they be? They could be less formal things. So they could be 
senior management senior management walkabouts again if you visualize the standards here when senior managers walk around they'll ask you why aren't you following the rules you've, you've identified the you visualize the rule and now you're not using it senior managers should pick that up when i work for saudi at saudi my, my managing director <clears throat> would constantly walk the floor and would pick up the fact that we weren't following the rules he would rarely talk to me about output. He would always talk to me about control. And he, he, he didn't care how many I'd made today. He knew that I wasn't following the rules. He knew the reason why I hadn't made targets is because I wasn't in control. So what would he concentrate on? He'd concentrate on the control aspect of my production line. So they can be less formal things, like senior management walkabouts. They could be startup checks. They could also be automated, some kind of automated mistake proof. So, for example, I believe in Toyota, they have a system that if the car is not completed in a certain time, it shows as an orange light over the, uh, over the production uh, station. If, if that cycle time is broken a second time, so not just one part that was just a little bit difficult to get assembled, but now you've had two parts, one behind the other, and you're exceeding the cycle time. At that point, it's automated, the line, automatically stops and people come to help that operator there is clearly a problem on the line and they come to help and take the problem away so that's like an automated version it's an automated policing process so these techniques these audits and checks which nobody likes or, or, or loves <clears throat> if what they're doing is controlling don't forget all of these things over here make money. All of these make money. If these things all focus on the things that make money, your control phase, it's, it, they are boring things. Nobody loves these things, but you should do because they are keeping the things that make money in control and it makes your day go sweet as sweet can be. And that is what the control phase is doing and it should be linked inextricably till the improve phase because what it's supposed to do is audit the new rules that you've put in place and that is the last step of define measure analyze improve and control